What is going on guys and welcome back to my Everton career on FIFA 13 and I just want to quickly update you guys with what's going on on the channel you're probably wondering why was there no FIFA yesterday well I just wanted to take time to sit back and finish up some of the uh, the playthroughs that I've got going on such as Assassin's Creed 3 almost finished that now on the very last mission um, and also I've got Army of Two Devil's Cartel that needs finishing up and also Sniper Ghost Warrior 2 I just need to upload those and release them for you guys and all will be good anyway on to the video that was my start 11 for this game against Sunderland in the BPL and I was looking forward to this in a way because I know Sunderland always managed to put up a challenge when whenever I played them in my Manchester United career and they didn't let me down they was really putting up a challenge they wanted to walk away with the win of course um, but I just kept pressurizing them kept pushing them back as far as they would go especially Jelovic he was trying to break through their defense and look at this a nice little one-two with the overlap for Morales went for the finesse shot looked to finish it there with Osman he could have quite easily made it 1-0 but Mignole again I know I've said it before but Mignole and Vaughan from Swansea they're, they're just the bane of my life on FIFA 13. I find it so hard to beat them. But we do eventually break through. As soon as I bring on those substitutions, we get a corner. And p &R took it and found the head of Jagielka, who makes it 1-0. And we just held on to that lead. And that was enough to see off Sunderland and walk away with the win and the three points. But I felt kind of disappointed because we had so many chances, but we just failed to make them pay. But I suppose we just have to keep moving on. I mean, we did win. We got those three points, but it just would have been nice to have beaten Sunderland by two or three goals. It just would have been nice. So we move on to our next fixture, which is again is in the BPL. It's against Norwich, who we play again after this fixture, but in the Capital One Cup. And there is a league table. We are in sixth position with City above us and Fulham below us. Level on points with them and it's just a battle between those two teams to try and keep the team stable, try and keep us around this sort of area so we can try and get European football for next season. And that was my lineup, and you'll probably notice that I changed my formation as well. I'm, I'm you know, I'm just trying to change it around, try and see what's comfortable for me. Look at Hulahan here, almost making it 1 0 to Norwich, but hitting the side netting. But you don't want to give him a second chance because he will make you pay, and that's exactly what he did for Everton. He made it 1 0 in the 68th minute to Norwich. Was there any comeback for us? No, there wasn't. We lost the game. Probably thanks to Jan Mucha, who was in goal at the time. I know some of you guys, I know there was one guy that said, oh, you don't want to be rotating the squad as much as you do. But I want to try and give Mucha a chance at least, instead of always having Tim Howard in goal. It seems as though Quinty Wusso Bay is enjoying football at Everton more than he did when he was playing at Arsenal. And that's good news. But for me, Quinty Wusso Bay just hasn't settled in just yet for us. I, I, I don't know why, but it just seems as though he's he's not playing to his full potential. But anyway, guys, we do move on to our next fixture, which this time is in the Capital One Cup. And we're at Goodison Park again. We're playing at home against Norwich. That pitch is going to be absolutely messed up because we're only a couple of days removed from that BPL game against Norwich. And that was my start at 11. Tim Howard does return to this squad. Avedo replaces Baines. And Jelovic starts again right front with Koke lying in just behind him. And it was time to get some revenge against Norwich after we dropped three points to them. It did seem as though my bad form from the BPL fixture against Norwich was going to continue over to this fixture in the Capital One Cup. As we just wasn't having any luck in front of goal. And in the second half, it was time to change things around. I bring on PNR, I bring on Hope and Jordan Ayu, my super sub. And it's the same procedure as the fixture against Sunderland. We get a corner and Ross Barkley makes it 1-0 to Everton. We're looking good now to go through to the next round. But one goal just wasn't enough. Ross Barkley with a shot and goal. Defender deflects it, but Jordan Ayew, my super sub, was there to make it 2-0. In the 81st minute, and what a goal as well. The ball just landed. Look how long. Look at the time he had there, Jordan Ayew. And he just waits for the ball to bounce up again. And he hits it on the half volley. Absolutely magnificent. Even though time was against Jordan Ayew to get his second goal, he didn't care. He burst through the Norwich defence and he sh he took the chance, he shot the ball and it just 
pelted right past the goalkeeper, right across the front of goal and nestled safely into that bottom corner. And that was enough to see off Norwich. We got our revenge after we dropped three points to them in the BPL and we knocked them out of the Capital One Cup. Pushing us through to the next round. As you can see, West Brom are through to the semis as well. Uh, Liverpool play Stoke. Uh, Manchester United will be playing Arsenal. So it's going to be very interesting to see who we get in the next round. I hope it's not Man United just yet. If it's going to be Man United, I hope we get them in the final of the Capital One Cup. Because I think that would be a great fixture. Which, of course, I'll be doing a live commentary for if we do get through to the final. If we can knock out whoever we get in the semi-final. And I think I've done pretty well, actually. For my first season with Everton, I've took them into the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup. And there we have it, guys. We've been drawn against West Brom in the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup. Hopefully, we can beat them and advance through to that final and head to Wembley. And look at this for a top story. Time for a change at Everton. I was kind of bemused when I first saw that headline because I was worrying that I was going to get the sack and that would be it. That would be this series over and I would have to start afresh with a new team. And I didn't want that because I know you guys are really into this Everton career mode at the moment. But it turned out, fortunately for me, that it was just the midfield that the press were picking up on. That apparently it's not good enough. Even though we've got players like Darren Gibson, Koke, who I've just recently brought in, Quincy Owusu Bay, we've got Osman, even Hitzelsperger for one or two seasons before he retires. I suppose in one sense the press are kind of right. Maybe I do need to bring in a more experienced central midfielder. But I wanted this series to be about bringing in younger stars and building them up to be top players. I mean, look at Koke. He's, he's been doing pretty good actually for Everton. Even though he's been kind of quiet, he's been putting in the performances and he's always been there. And I know he's not a midfielder, but Jordan Ayew, he's at the age of 21 and he's only going to get better. You've already seen what he can do when I bring him on as a substitution. He always manages to get onto that score sheet. Um, I, I mean, it's very rare with the games that he's started or that he's come on as a sub that he doesn't get onto that score sheet. He can only get better, right, with every game that he starts or comes on as a sub. I've also got my eyes on this other player that I want to try and bring to Everton once that transfer window reopens in January. He's at the age of 20, he's got bags of potential and he plays on the left wing so I'm kind of worried that if I do bring him to Everton, Quincy Owusu Abe is going to be worried about his position in the squad. But he would be on a rotational basis just like Jordan Ayew and Koke who either start the game for the first hour and get taken off or start the game on the bench and I'll bring them on on the 60th minute. But I want to try and, if I do get him, I want to try and make him into this player that everyone wants on their side. And look at this, Swansea City have finally joined the wealthy elite. The new owners are a wealthy family from the Middle East who are said to have made their fortune in property development. So it's going to be very interesting to see what Swansea do now, how they, com how they can compete with the top teams like Man United and Chelsea and City for some of the best players. Anyway guys, we move on to our next and last fixture of this video and it's against Tottenham Hotspurs. It's a big fixture because Tottenham are looking like strong contenders for that Premier League trophy. I mean, they lie in second position, two points behind Liverpool and level on points with Manchester United. So we had to be at our very best if we wanted to get something out of this game. Get those three points maybe or even a draw. I wasn't too fussed as long as we didn't drop three points to Tottenham because as you've seen, they're looking like a top side. They're a very dangerous side for some reason this season. I mean, we did really well to hold off their offense in the first half, but in the second half, it just seemed like our defense completely flopped and Adebayor fanned the back of the net with ease, making it 1-0 in the 48th minute. There was still plenty of time to take the ball up the other end, get an equalizer, maybe even get a winner, and Jelovic was looking likely to do that, but Brad Friedel kept stopping every attempt that he had at that goal. I did bring on Darren Bent to see if he could produce anything, see if he could get that equalizer that we so needed, but unfortunately he didn't and we lose to Tottenham 1-0 and we drop those all important three points I suppose we just have to move on guys that is the end of this video hope you've enjoyed be sure to like me on Facebook follow me on Twitter the links are in the description I'll see you soon peace out